Hello friends, I'm delighted to welcome you to this webinar on how to perform powerful analytics using SoftCat. I am C.A. Abdul Rafiq, Managing Director of Windsor Infotech Limited. In this webinar, we are going to cover how we can use SoftCat Enterprise SQL solution for performing various techniques of data analytics. This gives you a brief profile of myself. I passed my CA in 1985 and the CISA exam in 1995 and my special expertise in data analytics, business intelligence, and COVID. I've been very passionate in implementing and using technology, and I've been working on developing the solution for data analytics since more than two decades. In fact, recently, we completed two decades since we started development of the software. This gives you the four key learning objectives of this webinar. First, we'll get an idea about why you use SoftCat for analytics. Second, we'll use learn how to use SoftCat for analytics. Third, we'll walk through some of the key functions of data analytics. And then four, we'll have a case study or demo of audit test using SoftCat, where I'll give you a demonstration of how to use various, te various techniques of data analytics using SoftCat. Let's look at the first objective, why use SoftCat for data analytics? Data analytics, they say, is a must-have capability for the audit function and is widely expected to become a big part of the future. So if you look at any professional who uses information extensively, he has to know how to use data analytics. Whether you are CIO, CXO, or a CSO, you need to know about data analytics. Now, if you look at the basic definition of what data analytics is all about, they say it is a science of examining raw data with the purpose of drawing conclusions about that information. What can you do with data analytics? This just gives you a few pointers. The first thing is you can establish facts to confirm whether facts are as they are. You can explore hunches. You can draw inferences. You can confirm the hindsight. You can obtain insights and also validate foresight, which is called as predictive analytics. If you look at the recent publication of IEAA-SB, International Auditing and Assurance Standards Board, they brought out a publication on how data analytics is going to impact the audit quality. This publication was brought out by the Data Analytics Working Group. And they said data analytics could be used in various stages of audit. And this could be in developing audit procedures to obtain audit evidence. And this could be in the area of risk assessment, analytical procedures, substantive procedures, and test of controls. I'm going to give you a quick demo of how you can use data analytics for verifying and validating various types of controls using some sample data and performing various techniques. Now let's go to the next subject, how to use SoftCat for analytics. Now this gives you the seven steps of using data analytics. For any data analytics, before performing it, you should be very clear about what are the objectives you want to achieve and what are the deliverables of this assignment. For example, if you're doing a statutory audit or a financial audit, there is a statutory audit, financial audit report which has to be provided. If you're doing a tax audit report, tax audit, you have to provide a tax audit report. If you're doing an internal audit, there is an internal audit report which has to be provided as per the audit objectives. Hence, it's very important to establish the audit objectives based on that you will proceed further. In doing data analytics, the fundamental differentiator is data is available in a digital format. So it's important to understand where is this data available? What is the platform in which the data is available? You should know that the data is embedded inside technology. What will be the format of data? You should know how to access and analyze this data in the digital format. When the business process are run using computerized information systems, most of the data get digitized, it becomes intangible, it becomes part of the computer system. So you should know how to access and analyze this digital data using the same computer systems or software as required. So it's very important to understand what are the data you require, what format is it available, and what are the platform in which it is available so that you can requisition and get the required data for the purpose of analysis. 
depending on the audit objectives and the deliverables, it's also important that you formulate the required criteria for analysis. This is where you need to understand what are the business process and the system which is running and what are the relevant controls and the tests which need to be performed. Once you understand the business process, the relevant rules, the controls which are embedded inside the information system, they become the criteria for evaluation. This is where you collect the evidence as per the required audit objectives and evaluate them to confirm whether the controls are in conformance or whether there are any exceptions or irregularities or there are any control weaknesses. So this is where depending on understanding of the audit objectives, the data and the platform, the business process and the systems, you need to prepare an audit program or audit procedure, which, list, which includes a list of tests to be performed. Once you've documented and prepared these details, you need to apply the relevant tools and techniques as required, which I'm going to give you a demo a little later. Once you have performed data analytics, you should be able to draw inference and insight from that information. You should remember one important factor. The computer can process the data and provide you information. But what is the relevance of the information? What are the implications of that information? And what are the impact on the business process? You should be able to draw this inference and provide a report to the management as required, depending on what are the areas of controls which need to be improved, or what are the irregularities or exceptions which you found and how they can be mitigated. Now, if you take an example of a financial statement audit, now this gives you the seven key information criteria which are to be evaluated. The first thing you want to check is the completeness, whether the software application processes all the transactions and the resulting information is complete. Next aspect you will check is the accuracy, the correctness of the data, whether all the transactions which are processed in that information system are processed correctly and completely, and they provide the results as intended. You also need to check the validity of the information, whether all the transactions which are entered into the computer system are valid, and the resulting information is also processed completely, correctly, and the resulting information is valid. You also need to look at the segregation of duties, where you look at the authorization. Every organization has got segregation of duties, wherein every employee, depending on the role and responsibilities, is empowered with certain powers of authorization. It's important to check whether within the information systems, these authorizations have been properly inbuilt. This is what you want to verify. For example, let's say you're checking a bank and the branch manager has got the power to sanction loans up to two lakh rupees. You need to check whether the loans which have been sanctioned by the branch manager are within the authorized power of two lakh rupees. Or if there's a purchase manager and the purchase manager is authorized to purchase within five lakh rupees and the purchase are to be from authorized vendors, you can check in the system using data analytics whether all the purchase transactions are from authorized vendors only and are the, they are within the limits which have been prescribed for the purchase manager. You also need to look at the compliances, whether all the applicable compliances are complied with the required format. And you also look at the cutoff period. Any audit assignment which is done is for a specific, specified period. So you need to look at the transactions and look at whether all the transactions belong to the accounting period. One important factor you need to remember is the controls are embedded inside information technology. And this is where you need to use data analytics to evaluate this digital data. Now let's look at what are the top 20 data analytics. Okay, I'm just waiting for some participants to join. I'm not able to see them. Let's see. These are the top 20 data analytics features. Aging, append, authentication. This I've just arranged in the order, alphabetic order. There could be more than 200 to 300 data analytics features, but if you apply the Pareto principle 80-20 rule, you'll find that the 
probably this top 20 uh, data analytics features would cover most of the data analytics which is performed extensively. Let me go further. Now let's go to the next topic where I'd like to give you a quick walkthrough of what are the key functions of analytics. Here I'm going to walk you through the software to give you an idea about how the panels, menus, and the functions are arranged. And then we will follow it with the tests or the tests which you can perform. Now let's understand what is SoftCat all about. SoftCat, soft stands for software and CAT stands for computer assisted audit techniques. It's also called as CAA, T, which is computer assisted audit tools and techniques. The development of software, which is SoftCat started in 2001, incidentally, it started on 12 September and we received, completed two decades. We sold this to Tally in 2005 and it was with Tally for about three years. And after that, once again, I took back the rights and began development again in 2010. Since last 10 years, we have been vigorously working on developing the software. SoftCat is India's first CAT or data analytics software developed by auditors for auditors and for doing audit in any IT environment for any type of assurance or compliance assignment. It has been developed with a man effort of more than 50 years. It is designed by practicing CAs with experience of more than 30 years with inputs from CAs in practice and industry. It's a Windows based desktop software with the right blend of simplicity. It's easy to use and it has got a very small learning curve. It's practical to apply and it's got very powerful functionalities which you can perform in a few clicks. I'll show you quickly the demo of how these functions can be performed. The beauty of the data analytics software is it has the look and feel of a spreadsheet software like Excel, but it has the power of the database so that you can provide better assurance with greater assurance for multiple IT environments. If you have to summarize what soft can, can do, you will see that you can plan ahead with the right knowledge and skill sets which you got with the tools and techniques we provide you with SoftCat. You can leap ahead in your profile career and you can keep ahead by applying CATs using SoftCat. So this is where you can invest your future. And if in short, they say, is the auditor's dream come true. Let's look at the seven key benefits of using SoftCat. You can enhance your skills and tools. You can increase your productivity you can provide better assurance and add value. Let's go further. If you have to summarize the key benefit of using SoftCat, it facilitates you to apply your knowledge and skill sets to technology, which means you can apply thought to technology. How does SoftCat help in data analytics and how does it help CXOs? You have the knowledge, you have the skills, and we provide you the tools and techniques through the software so that you can provide value addition in your assignment to all your stakeholders. Let's have a quick overview of what SoftCat is all about. SoftCat currently is available in two flavors. One, it's available as SoftCat Enterprise, which is a data analytics software or BI for enterprise or CXO. Second, we have the second version, which is a limited version, which is called a SoftCat Pro, which is primarily used by professionals, firms. So if you look at the both the software, it's an independent data analytics software, easy to use and simple to learn. It has a look and feel of MS Excel, but with MS Access database, we have also another high-end software, which has got MS SQL. It has got powerful data analytics with more than 230 functions. In the case of SoftCat Pro, it has got 120 functions. In both the software, you find that you can perform complex analysis in a few clicks and it also has auto documentation, which means it documents automatically all the tasks which you perform. So it becomes a documentation for future reference and also available to you for peer review and also as a reference for future learning and use. If you look at a synopsis of the panels, menus and functions which are there in SoftCat, you will find SoftCat is actually broadly divided into these panels or tabs. You have the file or home, which where you can create the, or view the audit, audit and import data. You have the curate panel where you purify the data, transform the data to the standard structure which is required. You profile the data, which means you analyze the data to get the overall perspective. 
and you perform analysis and explore the data. You also investigate and relate the data. If there are the data is in multiple tables, you can perform sampling, which means you can extract specific samples on specified criteria. There are various types of utilities which are available through which you can split and combine and analyze data and also view the charts. You also have documentation and tools, which does the auto documentation, and you also have various trend line functions. Now, this gives you a synopsis of the number of functions which are there in each of the panels. And if you look at the same thing from the perspective of features, broadly, this gives you a quick summary of the type of functions which is there. You got the uti utilities, you got data analytics in FI, which is primarily used for assurance, compliance, and FI. You have the business intelligence and MIS, which is the heart of the software, including the data analytics, where most of the functions are available. And you also have documentation features. So if you see, 80 to 85% of the functions are focused on data analytics and FI, which is fraud investigation. Who are the most common users of software? You find they're used by auditors to find answers to audit questions. Softcat is used by fraud investigators. It's also used by management and CXOs. If you look at comparison of Softcat and other CAT software, you find most of the CAT software is supposed to be highly sophisticated. They're quite expensive, complex, they're technology oriented. They require specialist training. They're time consuming and difficult to learn. But in the case of Softcat, we have designed the software in such a way that it's affordable, simple, and it's technology independent. And any professional who knows how to use Excel or MS Office can use and learn Softcat very easily. And you can perform data analytics right now using Softcat. With limited training, you can get started. Broadly, if I have to cover what you can do with Softcat, you find this gives you the four steps. You can transform your audit process from a manual system to a digital system by migrating from a single purpose spreadsheet software to a multi-dimensional data analytics software. You can experience the amazing power of what you can do through audit technology and techniques. You can find answers by interrogating the data. They say audit is all about asking intelligent questions. Softcat will help you to get the answers from the data if you know the right questions. And it gives you the tools and techniques to be able to get answers from the data based on the questions you have. So whatever be the question, the imagination, your imagination is the limit. You can interrogate the data and get relevant information as long as the data is available. It is a great time saver. You could probably save 80% of your audit time and be much more productive and much more effective when you use Softcat as a data analytics software for performing any type of assurance or compliance assignment or a BI assignment. Now, this is a quick synopsis of the type of panels which are there. You have the curate panel, profile, analyze, investigate, document, utilities, and tools. I'll cover this in the software. This gives you a quick summary of the functions. For example, you've got aging. I've also explained what you can do through aging. You can perform analytical review. You can perform authentication check. You can classify the data, which is similar to the pivot table. But you find how different this is from the pivot table. It is multidimensional, and you can perform much more complex analysis compared to the pivot table. You can compare files and draw inference from these files. You can do dynamic query. You can identify exceptions based on specific parameters or conditions or criteria set. You can also identify duplicates. Duplicates you can also identify through Excel, but you find you can do much more than identifying duplicates when you use data analytics software like Softcat. You can also identify gaps, whether it's a numeric date or a character-based data. You can also join files. You can also derive various types of MIS. I told you data analytics is also BI software. So you can get various types of MIS dynamically. You can perform sampling. You can perform a sequence check. You can stratify the data, which means you can group the numeric data or the date related data or the character data into different strata. And you can also summarize the data. So let me quickly summarize the discussion so far we had so that I can give you a demo of what you can do through software, through specific functions. Softcat and data analytics, what is the relationship? I said to give you an overview of all the discussion we had in the last 20 minutes. This one slide summarizes it all. Depending on the need of the assignment, 
you identify the objective and the deliverables. For the objectives and the deliverables, you identify the relevant business process controls, the underlying technology. And depending on this, you will identify what are the specific information criteria which are going to be evaluated. What are the controls which are going to evaluate? You will use the specific tools and techniques provided by SoftCat to analyze and infer insights from information and you provide a report to the management. This in sum and substance is what you can do through SoftCat for the purpose of data analytics. The bottom line is you can do more in less time using SoftCat. You can get a big picture through data analytics about the data and then you can provide validation. So if you'd like to future-proof your career by being relevant today and tomorrow and become valuable professional, and this you can do by adding value. And SoftCat as a data analytics software will help you in this in a great way. So this is broadly what I wanted to tell you about what SoftCat is all about. If you got any questions, you can email us. You can also visit our website for more details. Now, I would like to spend more time, the balance amount of time, about 30 to 35 minutes, on giving you a demo of about 15 to 20 functions and show you how simple it is to use SoftCat as a data analytics software. Let's get started. This is an Excel file. Now, if you see here, we have got this data as per the tabs, panels, and the function. So if you see here, if you want to look at what are the tabs available here, you find you have the file, home, curate, profile, analysis, explore, and investigate, relate, sampling, utility. These are the panels, tabs which are available. And each of them, you will have the different functions for example, in the file tab, you have the audit, audit, file, password, etc. Similarly, let's say if you go to the home panel, you've got various types of functions. Now, let me just give one example before we move further. Let's say if I come to the analysis panel, the analysis panel has got about 43 line items. And if you want to look at what are the specific functions which are available in this, this documentation is also available online on our website. Now you find there are 33 functions pertaining to analysis. For example, you can identify duplicates, you can identify uniques, you can remove the duplicates. You can also perform same, same, different, same row and gaps in numeric, gaps in date, gaps in character like that. You can perform various types of techniques. Like that, this is a documentation which gives you a complete overview of what are the type of data analytics you can perform using SoftCat. Let me give you one more example before I show you a demo of the functions. Let's say we go to the investigate panel. Now, if you see investigate panel has got 22 functions. For example, using investigate, you can perform MIS. You can query data, which is of numeric type. You can query data, which is of characters. You can identify exceptions based on and or our condition. You can also list to find, for example, you have a list of holidays and in the data, you want to find out from the list of holidays, whether any transactions have happened on all the holidays, you can use the list to find function to perform this. You can also a dynamic query. For example, you want to find out how many transactions are there beyond 50,000 rupees, which have been entered by a particular person and for a particular vendor. You can also perform Benford law analysis. You can perform trend analysis, time series analysis, et cetera. So this gives you a quick overview of what you can do through SoftCat and this is a list of functions. And when you buy the software, we give this complete PDF file to you so that this becomes a quick reference point for you for using the software. Now let's get going and let us have a demo of how the software works. Okay, let's get started. Now this is the look and feel of the software called SoftCat. As I said, SoftCat is available in different flavors. Now the software which I'm using is SoftCat Enterprise SQL version. We also have a SoftCat Access version. You also have a SoftCat Pro and a SoftCat BI. Here our focus is on looking at SoftCat Enterprise SQL version. Now if you look at here, now these are the tabs you got. You got file, home, curate, profile, analysis, which I told you. These are the different types of tabs. Under each of the tabs, you got the panels. For example, in the home, you got the import data, 
you got copy, navigate, columns, tree, etc. Similarly, if you go to the tab curate, you got different panels. For example, you got remove characters, remove spaces. Under each of them, you got the functions. We have designed the software in such a way so that you should be able to navigate to the function you want in a few clicks. Now let's get started. Now, if you look at the data analytics software, there are two types. One type of data analytics software is a one which is an added to Excel. In this case, what will happen is any data which you can open in Excel in a tabular format, you can perform analysis. We've got a software called eCAT, where you can perform data analytics on data which are available in Excel. And this you can perform in Excel itself. So it's an add-in software, eCAT. You can watch the webinar recording, which we did on 14 September, which will be available on our website shortly. Now here, we are talking about SoftCAT as an independent data analytics software, which means you install the software and this is available like any other software. Now you see it has the look and feel of Excel, but it's a little different. It's a different in the sense that you cannot do any data entry in any of this. Okay, you can only view the data and you want to manipulate the data. You want to add new columns or new rows. You cannot do this unless you make a copy of the file. So let's get started. The first step in using SoftCAT is to identify the data, get it inside the database of the software. So we already have some sample data. For example, I've created an oddity called ABC company. And in this, I got test data one and I got test data two. And in each of this, I got sample files, which I am going to use for the purpose of the demo. But before that, I thought I'll get you started by showing you how to create an oddity and audit and also import the data. So if you come to the file panel, you got the oddity. We already have, if you see here, I go to the new. Now it asked me to give the oddity name. Let's say I call it as a webinar demo, 15 September. Okay, I can give the address, city, details, etc. I can also enter the organization details, the audit team details. I say, okay. Next, it creates the audit and ask me to next step to create the audit. Now I create the audit. Let's say in this case, I call it as demo for webinar. I can also give the start date of the assignment, the end date of the assignment. I can also capture the audit objectives, previous audit details, audit team, audit team, etc., and also mention who is the auditor in charge. Once I enter the details, I say, okay. Now you see, it takes me to the next screen where I can actually import the data. You can import data in three formats. One, standard PC format. Second, from the clipboard. Or third, from the ODBC. So I'm going to use an example of an Excel file and show you how you can import an Excel file. I say next. Now it asked me to browse the file for importing this. I browse the file. I'm going to pick up this file, bank advances. Now it reads the Excel worksheets and tells me that there are three worksheets in this, which is the worksheet I want to import, which means I can actually import all these multiple worksheets and also append them together. I have decided in this case to import only one file, which is the list of gross or outstandings to import. I say next. Now it gives me a list of the type of the fields which are available and also tells me the total number of rows. Okay, I can also put a condition, which means I say, I want to import data where the amount is beyond 50,000. I'm not doing any condition here. I say next. Now the data will be imported when I click on start. I click start. Now from the Excel data, this has been imported. Now you see it's already done. So I said done. You find that this data is captured from the Excel and is shown here in this database. It's loading the data. Now, if you see here, we have got totally 3,469 rows. The first thing you need to do when you import the data is to understand the field description or the data structure. So when you just double click on this, you'll be able to know what are the field structure and you can also give a short name for this. For example, you've got the serial number, which is numeric. You have BOR number, which is numeric. You've got limit, which is a character, which seems to be incorrect because the limit is an amount. And when it's the amount, 
If it is character, I cannot perform any numeric analysis. I'll show you a little later how to change this. You have the customer ID, which is numeric, account number, which is numeric, borrowed name, which is character. Like that, it gives you. You also find here there are three columns, F11, F12, and F13, which is given as character, which means they are nameless columns. And because it doesn't have a name, the software has actually given that as F11 and F12 and F13. Now, I cannot perform any analysis on this data. So I need to remove these particular columns. How do I remove these particular columns? There is a function here. If you come to the curate, we have got a function called delete empty column. Now, when you click on this, let's see what happens. It says the selected child fund to perform this function, which means this is the original data to maintain the integrity of the data. SoftCAD doesn't allow you to edit or modify this. So to perform this function, I need to make a child file. So it means I'll use save as. And I'll make a copy of the file. I'll give a name for this. Let's say I call it as gross outstanding. OK, and I can also say open this as a current file. Now I got this file. Now you see here again, they just makes a copy of the file because you, the original data is always maintained as a reference. Now I want to delete the empty columns. I don't need to even tell which are the empty columns. I just say delete empty columns. I successfully removed the three empty columns. Now you see the empty columns are gone. So the first panel you have got is the curate panel where you can perform various types of purification of data. And one example which I showed you is the empty columns. Okay, now let's say using this data, we want to perform certain analysis. For example, I want to know in the account number, are there duplicates? Okay, how do I perform this? I need to know where is the duplicate function. Now, if you see in analysis, there's a duplicate function. So my objective is, this is what I said, be clear about what are the type of tests you want to perform. In the account number, we want to know whether there are duplicates. Can there be duplicates? Let's see the answer. I got duplicates, it's very simple. I just have to go and select the column where in which I want. I'm selecting the account number and I say, okay. This should be able to go through all the 3,469 records and tell me which are the account numbers which are duplicates. Now you see there are two records which are duplicate. Okay, which means with the same account number, I've got two accounts. Now, if you look at the type of the account, okay, this is for marginal farmers and the total amount is so in one account, it's 35,312, another account, it is 35,348. So it looks like uh, there's a limit. These are the accounts, okay? Now, is it possible, now we have seen this, so then we can investigate further whether these two loan accounts exist. Now here, interestingly, you find there is one interesting feature that the account number is same, but the borrower name seems to be different. So there is certainly, and definitely there is an issue in this. I can go and investigate as to how come the account number is same, whereas the borrower number is different. Okay, it is possible one customer can have multiple accounts, but here the borrower name itself is different. So it means there is some data entered mistake or there could be a fraud. So it means I can go and investigate what has happened. Now let's go and check whether in the customer number, customer ID, are there any duplicates? How do I find out? Just click on duplicates and go and check, check the customer ID and I say, okay. This should tell me if there are any duplicates in the customer ID. Now you find here in the customer ID also, there are many duplicates. Okay, so which means there is an issue in this particular data because there are a lot of customers with customer ID one and you also have got customer IDs like this. Now, you can do this using the highlighting feature in Excel also, but there's one important factor here. Now, I'd like to know this particular duplicates. I'd like to know how many customers have got how many number of duplicates. So I can just go and say summary. So in this case, what it will do for each of the customer IDs which are duplicate, it will tell me what the number of times this customer ID has appeared. Not only that, I can also dynamically sort this in ascending or descending order. 
Now, I find the customer ID one. Now, this number cannot be correct, but there are nine, 19 accounts with that. So I, can, I want to see the details. I just double click, which is called a drill down. It will go and query the original data and pick up this 19 transactions and show me that. Let's check. Okay, there is an issue here. Ideally, what should happen is when I double click on this, I should be able to pick up these 19 accounts which are duplicates. Okay, now you see totally that 534 accounts which are duplicate. So I need to go and investigate why these accounts are duplicate. Does it mean that there are multiple accounts which have been given to the party? Or it could be possible they're following the customer ID and the account number is the one which is supposed to be unique. Okay, now I would like to group this loans as per the class of the loan and know what is the gross outstanding for each class of a loan. So if you see the type of loans here, I got standard, substandard like that. I got different categories. I would like to group this. So what is the function I can use for this? I can use a function called classify. Now you've got this function called classify here. This is similar to what you do in the pivot table. Now, what is that I want to classify on? I want to classify based on the class. Okay, I just say class. And what is the amount I want to total? I want to total the gross amount outstanding. And I have to just say yes. I can get the result in two ways. I can the, get the result in the result form dynamically. I can further do further analysis, or I can also get this result directly in Excel. There are various other things I can perform. In addition to this group by, I can also get this group by, for example, these particular loans, what I've got, I want to group it based on the sector. So I can go and say, I want to group it based on the sector. Okay, then what to do as per each of the classes and the sector, I'll be able to get this amount. I can also compute. Okay, here I'm not computing, I'm just computing the sum. I can also do a comparison. I'll come to this maybe in future sessions. I say, okay. Now this is what I said is the difference between the pivot table and the data analytics software. Now you see here, in this case, the accounts which are classified as loss, which is the fourth category, you got the total number and you also got the gross outstanding. Here in this case, it looks like the gross outstanding is zero. Okay, so it means it could be possible these accounts have been closed. Similarly, there are here, if you see below, you got 20 accounts, which are total amount of 80,077, which are classified. It also tells me which is the sector to which they belong. Okay, so this is how I can do a dynamic analysis and I've done classify based on a group by. Okay, I want the result in Excel. I can just click on Excel. I can get this result. Now, if I want to get this particular loan, for example, I want to do further analysis. I want to account which pick up which are the accounts which are actually priority, or let's say which are the accounts which are putting to education, I see, I can dynamically do the analysis and get this information, okay? This is what is possible in classify. Let's see what further tests I can perform on this. I got this gross amount. I would like to summarize this data based on the value to identify what are the unique amount which is outstanding for each value, each unique value. So what I'll do is I'm going to pick up the summarize on gross amount outstanding, accumulate on gross amount outstanding. This will tell me for each unique outstanding amount, how many accounts are there and what is the total value? So here you see, it looks like most of the amounts are unique. Totally we had 3,469 accounts. Here we got 3,250 accounts which are unique. Now let's see which are the accounts which are multiple, I just go in here, just single click, it will sort. Now you see here, 79,100 is outstanding by five people. 2,648 is outstanding from five people. 5,6,479, there are four accounts. Like that I can find out the details. Let's see whether I can do a drill down on this. I just double click. I should be able to get the details. I got the details here, if you see, these are the five accounts where the same amount is outstanding. And incidentally, you find the borrower name also seems to be same. 
Okay, it looks like there are multiple loans which have been given to this party, and these are with different account numbers. Okay, but it is marked as standard, which means the party has been paying the loan amount promptly, which means for the same party, we have given five loans with the limit of 75,000 rupees. Okay, this is how we can do the analysis using this type of a data. Can I do this grouping based on the facility? The same function which I did classify and summarize, I can also use a function called group by. In the case of group by, it doesn't matter whether the data is numeric character or date, I can do the grouping. For example, in this case, I do grouping based on the facility. Now facility, one minute, let me just check. Where is my facility? Uh, we got the facility here. And what is that I wanted? I wanted the total amount of the outstanding, uh, the gross amount outstanding here. I can also get the percentage. Let's say I'm not interested in the percentage. I'll say I don't want the percentage. And I say, okay. Now this will tell me for each type of facility, what are the loan which has been granted? Now, if you see here, there are totally 10 types of facilities of loans <clears throat> which are granted by the bank. And for each of this, you will get to know what are the count of the facilities, what are the percentage of facilities, and what are the total amount which is outstanding. Now, if you want to get an idea based on, let's say, the amount, which account of facility has got the maximum. Now, we went to drill down. What I wanted to do was I just wanted to sort it. Now, if you see here, the maximum loan which has been given is in the case of the cash credit, which constitutes about 886 accounts. And in terms of percentage, the constitute 26 percentage or percentage of facility. Okay, similarly, if you look at in terms of the percentage, I will just do a single click. Now I'll be able to get to know what are the total number of account based on the percentage. Okay, this is what we have done. Now let me come back to my sample data which I had. Now I'd like to look at the statistics before I close this file. Let me look at the statistics. I can get a one overview, a macro perspective of the data by just clicking on the statistics. Now if you just click on the statistics button, it computes the statistics for each of the type of data. It tells you what are the total number of records, what are the sum of the records, the average of positive records, all this type of data, you get it one glance, okay? You'll also be able to get the file definition. Now, if you see here, as I told you, which is a limit, which is a character, all these things I can get. If I need to change this, what I also need to do is, I need to go to the original data and change the format so that I can get import this in the uh, character data, or there's one more option where you can go and change this data to numeric. If I perform any analysis, now the results, what are the results are there, it will be available here. This is what I said is auto documentation, which means all the functions which you perform, it's automatically recorded as to when did you perform that. Okay, and what are the result you got. Now let's come back to our original file and we'll go further. Now I want to come back to ABC company. Now I've got to come back to ABC company and there are various types of functions I want to perform here. Let's quickly get going. Now I have got this particular data called account trans. Now here, if you see, I got this data, which is account ID. We're going to perform two types of tests here. Transaction ID, transaction number, transaction description. And you got the transaction description here. Date, transaction description, amount and running total. I'm not interested in the running total. Let's see what type of analysis we can perform here. One of the things I want to perform in this case, now if you see here, for each of this, you get an idea about what are the type of functions you can perform. Now here, I want to perform something called as a character gap. I got this transaction number, and this transaction number is alphanumeric. Now inside this alphanumeric, I want to find out are there any gaps in the numbering? Because these numbers are supposed to be unique and they're supposed to be sequentially following one another. So I just go to the character gaps. Now here it tells me, I want to, do you want to perform it on the transaction number? I want to perform, yes, I want to perform on the transaction number. Get the data right, the transaction number. It already has got the mask for this particular file. I say, okay. 
So just a few clicks, that's all. You don't need to spend too much time. Now it's already identified in all the data which is available here, that ABC12, ABC12 is a gap here. Now as you see here, after 11, I got 12 as a gap. Again, I got ABC24, there is a gap here. Like that, it's able to find out all the gaps and tells you what are the gaps which are available in this file. Now there's another interesting function I want to perform, which is called as this fuzzy match. Now here, I got the transaction description. It looks like they're actually duplicated, but to fool the persons, they actually put the data in different way. I want to rearrange this data using the fuzzy match logic and identify the duplicates. So I use a function called fuzzy match. In fuzzy match, there are six functions. I'm going to give you a demo of one function, fuzzy match arrange. Now be clear about what is that I want to perform. I want to perform on the transaction description. I got the transaction description. I also want to have a space because without the space, I'll not know how it's arranged. I can also do ignore, I'm not doing anything. And based on this, I want to find the duplicates. Now, if you see here, I should be able to get the result. It'll rearrange the data cell-wise for the transaction description. And it tells me, now if you see here, this particular data, pertaining to customers number 302, 3002 to 3010. Now, if you see here, the same transaction has been entered in different ways. See, check number towards 93 printers, check number 93 towards printers, like that, there are different names, but you find the data is rearranged and it's able to say that these are duplicates. Similarly here, if you see, they said purchase HDD of, again, they said purchase of HDD, all the data is rearranged. Now, where do you think it's useful? For example, let's say you got a name, and sometimes the name is given as first name first and second name and second name and first name like that you might give in different ways. All this can be analyzed using this fuzzy match. Now let's go further. I'm going to take this, this one. You got something called aging two fields. Now this has data pertaining to the sale and the receipt of amount from the party. What we would like to do is I'd like to know based on this data at what is the time which is being taken by the parties for payment. Let's say our credit policy is that they have to pay within 30 days. I would like to group this and know within how many days the percentage of people who are paying and are there people who are paying beyond the credit period. Now for this, I use a function in profile called as aging two fields. Now I got the sale date. Now here, the higher date is the receipt date. So I take the receipt date minus the sale date. It dynamically computes the difference and says the minimum interval within which the party has paid is 25. The maximum time which is taken by the parties here in this data is 199 days. And it says you can take an increment of 17. I say I want an increment of 20. Okay, and I say fill. It automatically creates a strata for this. And next I have to say, okay. Now you see the magic will happen. What it will do is it'll run through this complete data of 6,000 plus records. And it tells me out of this particular parties which are there, see between 25 to 44, 3,094 people have paid, which means if you see the percentage, 46% of people have paid within 45 days. Now, 45 to 64, there are 3,427 people have paid, which means 51, which means 97% of the people have paid within 65 days. Okay, and then if you look at the late Latifs, now you'll find here, there are guys who are actually paying between 185 to 199 days. There are 15 parties. I would like to know who are these parties. I just double do a double click. I should be able to get the list of these parties. Now let's say, now this is not clear because my credit period is 30 days. I'd like to categorize this further. What I'd like to do is I say aging to fields again, and I pick up the receipt date here. I got the sale date, it gives me this interval. Now I say, I would not like to go with this interval. I'd like to enter my own interval. I'm going to say, I want to say between 30, because the credit period is 30 days. I want to say 30 to 40 days, 45 days, 46 to let's say 60 days. And I want between 61 to 90 days. Okay, and I'm leaving the rest. Okay, now let's see what happens when I do this. Now here you see there are parties who are paid within 25 days. Now that will come under lower bound. There are seven parties who are paid much ahead of time. 
Okay. Now, if you see here, 30 to 45 days, there are 3,087 people who are paid. Okay. And then you have 46 to 60 days, 3,408. I'm still not satisfied with this because I'm interested in finding out who are the people who paid within 30 days. So I just close this. This is where I said you can perform dynamic analysis any number of any number of times I want. Now I just go and select. See, it's very simple. I have to just go and know what are the data I have to select. I give the free interval. I'll say I know the minimum is 25. So I say 25 to 30. How many people have paid within 25 to 30? How many people have paid between 31 to 45? And I say 46 to 60. And I want to say 61 to 90. And I say, let's say 90 to 180. I just want to get an analysis of this. Okay. Now, the credit period of the company, remember, I said is 30 days. Now, I find 3073, which means 46% of the parties are paying on time. Okay. 31 to 45 days. We got 21 parties. Most of the parties, it looks like 3,408, 51% of the parties are paying between 46 to 60 days, which means definitely the collection is not being made by the company on time and there's a delay in collections. And this is how we are able to get the analysis based on this particular data. Now let's say, now I'm going to the, go to the next one. I have this format data. Okay, what is this format data all about? I've got this particular, let's say, PAN number, TAN number, and GST number. Now I want to identify whether this particular number is in the standard format. So where is this identify format? So I can go to the particular function where I got the identify format, and based on that, I can perform the function. Now, if you see here, you got this validate patterns. This is another function where you can go and validate the patterns. It should be within this only, explore. Okay, I think it should be numeric data character. Let's see if I don't know the function, can I find this? Okay. Yes, we got it here. So we got the identifier format. Now I got the GSTN. I want to show the field length. Not only that, I want to show the identify the exceptions. Okay, based on the field length, I'm able to get, get these details. Now, if you see here, out of the total number of accounts which are available here, there are one, not one account where the data is not in the right format. So now you've got, for example, let's say not in the right format, sorry, the field and totally. Now, if you see, let's say 14, I got this particular accounts which are not in the right format or field length. So I can identify the format based on which I can identify the exceptions. Okay, now let's come back again here. I got this invest uh, invoice 2009 and invoice 2020. These are the two files which are available. What I would like to do is, I'd like to make a comparative analysis of the sales which has happened to these parties. And this is the data pertaining to sales which happened during the financial year 14, 2019. And this data is pertaining to sales which happened between, for the, in the financial year 2020. Okay, this got about, 4,999 records and 2019 has got about, let's see the result. We got about 4,262 records, okay? Now, what I would like to know is, I'd like to know the performance as per the customer, as to which customer has bought how many times. So I go to the function relate and say compare. So I'm comparing two files here, invoice number 2019, and I'm taking invoice number 2020. Okay, now what are the field based on which I want to compare? It gives me the options. I can look at the performance based on the salespersons, based on the product, or based on the customer. I'm going to take based on the customer. And what is the total I want? I want the total based on the amount. Okay, I can also compute the difference, which means what is the difference between 
the amount which the customer purchased in 2019 and 2020. I can also group based on a particular sector. I'm not doing that. I can also put a condition where the sale is beyond 10,000 or 20,000 like that. Okay. I've done the criteria and I have to say, okay. Now you find this, you can't do this in Excel. And even if you do in Excel, you have to use a, a lot of conditions macros. Now, if you see here, in a Jiffy, we got the complete list of all the purchases which are made to the customers. There are totally 992 groups of customers who bought. Now, if you see here, customer ID <coughs> 10,000. First year, he bought three times. Second year, he bought five times. And this gives you the difference. Okay. Second customer number 10,001, he bought two times. And the next year, 2020, he has bought eight times. Now, there could be customers who were existing in 2019, but who are not bought in 2020. How do I find that? I just say zero. So I'm getting 51 customers who purchased in 2019, but they're not purchased in 2020. And I can also get the total sum of the amount here. Just by doing a single click, I get to know total amount, 4,20,007. This is the total value of 51 customers who have discontinued buying. So I can actually follow up with the customers and check why they have not purchased from the company. Now let's say I want to go back here and pick up who are the new customers who have been added. I give zero here. We find that 39 new customers have been added and the total sales made to them is 3,8,836. Now, I want to find out who are the customers who, in terms of performance, who are the lowest or the highest in terms of increase. I can also do a sorting here based on that. I can get to know based on the difference here. I can know in terms of the count, I can also know the value. Similarly, in terms of the amount also, I can do the difference. Okay, this is how I can do a dynamic analysis. This is what is the compare function all about. Like that, if you see, in each of these functions, there are multiple functions you can perform. I'll just do one quick function now before we close, because already time. So let's say I go to payroll for the year. What I would like to do here is, let me show you two functions. I got this payroll. Now in this payroll, what I'd like to do is, this is the payroll of the all the employees, which are salaries paid during the year. Okay, now if you see, you need to understand the data. I got this employee name. So if you want to sort it based on the employee name, you see, I can sort it, I can get to know. I can group this based on the employee name. During the year that employee should have been paid only 12 times. I'll get to know if there are any employees who have been paid more than 12 times or less times, that becomes the exception. I got this maker checker, which means I got this name, which means the maker checker should be different. This is what I called as authorization or segregation duties. I want to find that. So what I'll do is I go to analysis. I find duplicates in same row and I'm giving the maker and checker. When I give the maker and checker, it will go through all the records and give me the list of records where the maker and checker is same. Now, if you see here, I've got nine accounts where the person who has created the data is same and the person who's verifying the data is also same. So these are exceptions. I can mark it for audit and use it for verifying and validating why these exceptions have occurred. Now, all the employees have got bank accounts. The salary should have been paid to their bank account. Now, I would like to know who are the employees where the name and the code is same. I got the employee number and the employee name is same, but their bank account detail is different. Okay, I say, okay. Now I can just imagine trying to do this in Excel. Now you need to remember that Excel is not designed for data analytics from the audit perspective. Now you see, I'm able to find out three accounts where this particular employee has changed his bank account. It could be possible. This is a genuine case where the employee has changed his bank account, or I can also find out, investigate whether there's any fraud or error here. Now you see, in all this year data, I was able to find out this in a Jiffy. And this is what is the power of the data analytics. Okay, let me show you one more bonus function. I got something called a procurement file. What I'd like to know is, all the procurement which has happened for the material code, I would like to know the variance in prices. For this, what I'd like to do is, I go to a function, 
called as RSF. Now here, I'm going to give the material code or the material name, okay? And this material code should have been bought at the material has, should have been bought at the same price. So I'm going to give the unit price. Now you see this RSF, when I look at the result, I'll explain to you. In this thousand plus records, there are actually 1,100 records. It's able to group them based on the material code. And it tells me that this particular material dust covers, they're purchased 81 times. The highest price we paid is 700 rupees. The second highest price is 70 rupees. And there is a variance of 10 times. Definitely there cannot be such a big variance. I can find out why this variance has occurred. Okay, now I want to see the date result here. I just double click. I want to see how many number of times this purchase of 700 rupees has been made. I can just do a double click. I'll get the complete result here. Now if you see here, I just do a sort here. I get to know that actually this was purchased between 31 rupees and after that the price increased to 70 rupees and there's one purchase which I made for 700 rupees. And which means this could be an error or a fraud. 55 dust covers have been entered as 700 rupees and they've been paid 700 rupees. So it means I'm able to identify this fraud error very, very quickly. Now all these cases of all these exceptions, I'm able to find out which are the exceptions happened. Now let's say this is based on the first and the second price. Now it could be possible, this person actually has purchased 700 rupees, let's say 70 rupees is the price. He has actually purchased another item at 690 rupees. Now in the case of the RSF, this will not be able to find. For that, we've got another interesting function, which is called as the MVF, which is the maximum variance factor. When I click on the maximum variance factor, it's the same function. You see the power of the function is in your ability to select the data and we'll take care of all the complex computations. So you have to just select the material code or the material name and the unit price and leave the computation, leave the rest to us and be able to give you the result for each of this, whether it's 1,100 or 1 lakh, 10,000 or maybe 11 lakh, what will be the number of data? In fact, we did it for one Amazon reseller who had about 1 lakh transactions per month and we were able to get the results in no time. It looks like we didn't perform this correctly. Let's see. Okay, I've got this material name. I'm selecting the unit price. Okay. And I have to say, okay. Okay, there is a small problem in this. I think we're not able to get the result here. Okay, you should be able to get, just like we got the RSF, you should be able to get the result here. Okay, so this is just a quick overview of how you can perform data analytics using SoftCat. Okay, so if you've got any questions, I'll take the questions. Or I thank you very much for attending this webinar. I hope this was useful to you. We plan to conduct uh, every month a webinar on this particular uh, SoftCat series where we'll cover different functions. So thank you very much and see you in the near future. Bye.